These are seven things that you should never do to your houseplants if you want to avoid the pain of killing your beloved plants and instead become a skilled enthusiast. These tips will mean that you have healthier and better looking plants that your friends and family are envious of and you're proud to display in your home. If you've been watching my channel or any other plant YouTube channel for long, you'll know that we should never put most of our houseplants in direct afternoon sun, otherwise the leaves will scorch. This is because our houseplants are tropical and normally grow under the canopy of taller trees in the jungles of Central America or Southeast Asia. This means that they get dappled sun throughout the day. When we place these plants on a south facing window without the protection of overhanging trees, they tend to scorch and dry out. This is similar to when you go somewhere hot and sunny for your holidays. You don't sit on a sun lounger all day without sun cream on your first day because you know you'll end up looking like a cooked lobster. Instead, you apply a thick layer of sun cream and sit in the sun for only a few hours so you don't burn and then extend the number of hours you're sitting in the sun gradually as your body gets more accustomed to it. We can apply this same theory with our plants to allow them to acclimatize to more sun over a period of time. Monstera deliciosa, for example, can be trained to sit in up to six hours of direct sun each day and it will respond by developing leaves with lots of fenestrations and perforations. The trick is to move your plant nearer to the window gradually over a few weeks. If you notice the plant is struggling, then just slow down the pace you are moving your plant. But there is, however, a nifty way to acclimatize your plant to more sun though, without having to move your plant closer to the light every few days. Now that autumn is here, for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, the sun isn't as strong as in the summer. This gives us an opportunity to move our plants to spots in our homes that get more sun. Our plants can then acclimatize to the weak autumn and winter sun and slowly get used to the stronger sun as spring and then summer rolls around. By the time summer is here, your plant should be much more attuned to full sun conditions and you'll avoid the scorched leaves problem. I propagated my Monstera two years ago and it began pushing out new leaves at the end of summer. I moved the plant to my west facing window so they could soak up the sun over autumn, winter and spring and now the plant is fully accustomed to the sun with no scorching on the leaves and some perforations in the newest leaf. To really get the best out of our tropical plants, we shouldn't rely solely on the light Mother Nature provides to us, the sun. Most of us have limited access to bright light since we only have a certain number of windows in our homes, and lots of us live in apartments with only a north-facing aspect. We also have to remember that no matter how bright our living rooms are, they will never be as bright as the grey outdoors where plants are not covered by ceilings and surrounded by walls. To get the best growth out of our plants, we need to find ways of boosting the light in our homes. We can do this with nifty little tricks like placing mirrors behind plants facing the light source to reflect light back onto the plants and I mentioned this in my recent plant hacks video. I'm also a big advocate of supplementing the light in our homes with grow lights. I've been using grow lights for a few years now and my plants have never looked better. I recently got the Sansi 32 watt bulb that I shine over my Calafair Elga grass for 10 hours every day and it's responded brilliantly with thick lush growth. I also use clip-on grow lights on my black IKEA cabinet that allows me to keep plants in this part of the room that I wouldn't otherwise be able to because of how dark it is. I've got a link to Sansi in the description of this video so you can check out all the grow lights they have available and you can use Sheffield 15 at checkout to get a nice 15% discount on all their products. Temperature is so important to houseplants and it's something lots of beginners don't consider. Your houseplants are tropical so they're used to consistent warm temperatures year round. This means they don't like it when temperatures drop below 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit for a prolonged period of time. Much like we need central heating on in our homes to protect us from the cold when winter comes around, plants also need protection from the cold, otherwise they will suffer in the same way we do. Now don't get me wrong, plants won't wither and die when left in our homes without the heating on for a few hours. It's when we leave them to fend for themselves for weeks in an unheated space that it becomes a problem. So when you go away this year to see the family at Christmas, Consider setting your thermostat so that the temperature in your house doesn't drop below 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. At the very least, your house shouldn't drop below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Also, be mindful of where your houseplants live in your home, especially when the central heating is on. You don't want to place your plant on top of any windowsills with radiators underneath. The warm air will create an inconsistent environment that is sometimes warm and dry and other times cool. Your plants just won't like that. They like consistency above everything else. Buying the wrong plant for your home is another mistake we need to stop making. But what is the wrong plant? Simply, this is buying a plant that is not suitable for the spot in your home you're going to put it in. We've all fallen in love with a calafeo in our local garden centre, brought it home and then watched it die in the space of a few months. The main reason for this is that we didn't have a plan for the plant. We put it somewhere where it didn't stand a chance to succeed and it duly failed. We can't buy a calafea, stick it on our south facing window for it to get blasted by the sun all day and expect it to thrive. I keep all my calafeas away from my windows because I know they hate to dry out and they hate direct sun on their leaves. Keeping it in sun will only result in brown leaves. I've also learned the hard way they don't like tap water which results in crispy brown leaves so you need to make sure we set them up for success by knowing what they need. Part of this is also knowing what plants we already have and learning what they need, especially if they are showing signs of stress. If we don't know the name of the plant, then my top tip is always to use Google Lens to take a picture and identify it, and this has saved my bacon numerous times. A mistake I see all too often with beginner plant enthusiasts is repotting a plant when there's absolutely no need to. I often see this with my own family, where they buy a plant from the store and then go on to repot it as soon as they bring it home. This is where I scream at them to calm down. In all seriousness though, unless your plant is so incredibly root bound that it's bulging out of the pot, then just leave it alone in its pot for the first season in your home. We don't want to stress the plant out any more than it already is. Similar to that homesick feeling we get when we're away from our home for a couple of weeks, your new plant is living in a new home which is a change from the nursery, so it needs to stay in the pot it's in and acclimatise to its new surroundings. I tend to leave my new plants in their plastic nursery pots that they were living in at the garden centre for up to a year and then check the roots to see if they need upsizing. Propagating is a fantastic way to grow the number of plants you have for free. I regularly propagate during the spring and summer. In fact, I think I've been able to propagate most of the plants in my home at least once which I can either keep or give to friends and family. Something that I've stopped doing though is propagating during the depths of winter. This isn't because it harms the plant in any way, but simply because the results are slow and the success rate is lower. The most important thing that cuttings need to develop roots is light, and there just isn't enough of it available during the winter. So they tend to just sit there, not developing roots, eventually leading to rot on the cutting. Last winter, I propagated my Ficus elastica tineki in water and was just not seeing any results for months, even though I had them in front of my east facing window. This changed when I put the cuttings under my Sansi grow lights, with roots finally appearing after just one week. This really confirmed to me how important good light is to develop roots on cuttings. So my advice then is to leave your propagation projects until the spring unless you have a good grow light you can use to ensure success. Let me know in the comments if you're a winter propagator. Beginner plant parents are often fearful about pruning their house plants and I can understand why. You've just spent $50 on a variegated Pothos Marble Queen and you don't want to risk killing the plant by cutting it up. But the truth is, pruning your plant is actually really good for it. So avoiding pruning your plant is something you should never do. As plants get older, their stems get longer and longer until they end up leggy. These leggy stems often end up losing vitality because the plant doesn't enough energy to support the growth. Pruning unruly stems re-energizes the plant and encourages new growth to come out. If you're worried that cutting a stem kills that stem, then no need. You'll actually find that two new shoots appear to replace the one you cut off. This is most evident on ficus plants, jades and pothos. This is a great way to really push out your plant. Pruning not only applies to the foliage, but also the roots too. Much like foliage can become tired, so too do the roots. Pruning a root bound plant cuts away damaged roots and encourages it to replace with new healthy roots. Have a look at my video on this for more details. 
There are lots of houseplant care tips I really wish I knew five years ago so that I didn't make the mistakes I made back then. In this video here, I share with you what those tips are so that you can avoid making those mistakes for yourself.